Hello and welcome to this next segment of CD and MOSFET spectroscopy for chemist. My name is Arnab Datta and today we are going to discuss about the application of MOSFET spectroscopy where we are going to look how we can use MOSFET spectroscopy to understand the properties of ferrocene. So, in the previous segment we are talking about ferrocene and we find out this ferrocene can be present in two forms. One is this eclipsed version where the two rings are actually on top of each other or it can be present in the staggered geometry where the two rings are actually in opposite direction present in that particular molecule. And among these two the staggered position is actually more stable because in the eclipse form it actually faces the steric hindrance coming from this substituents present in this cyclopental dynyl ring which is avoided over here because they are separated at the maximum it is possible in this particular geometry. So, with that we are going to move forward and we find that this ferrocene molecule from now on we are going to draw only the staggered form because now we know that is the most stable state of ferrocene. So, now first this ferrocene was taken and people have drawn this ferrocene in the staggered form and try to measure the MOSBA spectra for this particular ferrocene molecule. And when they run that they found an isomer shift. and also quadrupolar splitting in this particular molecule. Now, when we talk about isomer shift we found that this is actually coming around 0.53 millimeter per second and quadrupolar splitting is quite a con large one 2.39 millimeter per second. The question is we try to understand why there is a quadrupolar splitting, why this isomer shift. The isomer shift is representing the iron is in plus 2 oxidation state over here and the quadrupolar splitting says that what is the geometry of this particular iron over here in this ferrocene. So, in the staggered conformation the point group is D5D and in this particular condition how the electrons will be there. So, we are mostly talking about the d electrons and the d electron configuration in d 5 d is as following. So, it is a little bit different that what we expect for a octahedral or tetrahedral geometry and if you look into the character table of d 5 d we will find that d orbital is treated in these 3 segments. First one is a doublet. E 2 g which is actually showing you the x square minus y square and x y orbital. Then comes the a 1 g dash which is coming for the z square orbital and then comes the e 1 g orbital which is coming for the x z and y z orbital. And over here iron plus 2 has 6 electrons. So, those 6 electrons goes like this because the difference over here it is actually quite large greater than the pairing energy. So, that is why it stands out kind of a low spin system where all the 6 electrons are paired up. And over here you can see the electrons are in x square minus y square x y and z square orbitals. So, it is not really 
properly oriented in all different axes x z and y z is totally empty. So, that is why it creates a valence electric field gradient which is going to be non-zero. And then when we look into the lattice interaction, it looks pretty similar on the top side that it is actually binding with two similar ligands, but they are oppositely oriented and you can see the orbitals which is are actually going to interact over here. It is coming mostly from the top and bottom. So, if on the iron center you can say it is having some thing free on this particular axis. So, that is why it is not really a totally symmetric one. So, it is going to have also the lattice electric field gradient and that is why it has a huge electric field gradient coming from both the components the valence and the lattice component and that is why it is reflected in its huge quadrupolar splitting right over here and iron is in 0.53 millimeter per second. To understand a little bit further that how the electrons are actually exchanging between the metal the iron and the ligand in this case the cyclopental dynal ring an experiment was performed with three different derivatives of ferrocene. And those derivatives are as following. In one case, it is the simple iron CP ring. So, this is the compound. So, we write it iron CP2. And then the next compound is the following which is pretty similar to the previous one, but with a slight difference that one of the ring right now have methyl ring, methyl groups connected to it rather than the hydrogen. So, now one of them this is C5 not H5, but CH3 whole 5. This remain as C5 H5. And this particular system over here, it is we write down as CP star, just to come it is the all methylated version of the cyclopental dynal ring. So, this one we could call CP CP star. And then there is another version of the molecule and you can probably predict what we are going to have where both the rings are actually all methylated. So, you can call them iron CP2 star. So, these are the three molecules have been prepared and then if you look into the isomer shift and the quadrupolar splitting of that and try to find out what is actually happening. And this is the quadrupolar splitting. And try to find out what is happening. So, iron CP2 the values are already we have mentioned over here. So, it is going to remain the same what happens when you move to iron CP CP star? Interestingly, the isomer shift goes down a little bit, it goes to 0 0.5, which typically says that the oxidation state on the iron is probably on the moving towards a further positive side. Because as we remember, if we have an iron center and the oxygen state increases, it has less d electron, less d electron means it has less shielding on the s electron and the s electron specifically, specifically the 3 s electron will be having more chance to go into the nucleus. So, it will increase the chance of having s electron density on the nucleus higher which will be multiplied by this change 
in the radii of the atom in the excited versus ground state was already negative. So, multiply that. So, it is going to move to the negative side. So, it is going to be lower down and that is what we are seeing over here that with Cp change to Cp star it is moving down to the lower side. The change it is a slight change also in the quadrupolar splitting it goes to 2.44. Now when you move towards this Cp 2 star that means both of them are Cp, uh, Cp star methylated the value go further down 0.49 and this one go to 2.47. Now we want to understand why it is happening. The most important thing over here is the change in the isomer shift. You can see it is actually going down as we are moving from Cp to Cp star. So, as we go to more Cp to Cp star my delta value actually goes down which actually says that my iron is actually oxidation state is slightly increasing the formal oxidation state we are talking about. And over here why it is increasing? So that is actually giving us a very nice idea of what is the interaction happening between iron and the cyclopentyl dienyl rings over here. So, when you talk about cyclopentyl dienyl rings over here these are actually negatively charged anions which are trying to give electron to the iron and this is actually exchanging electron density with the iron. Now when you put this methyl groups over here, the methyl groups actually have one very interesting property. It actually pushes some electron density from the methyl groups towards the ring which we can say the plus I effect, the inductive effect and this is happening over here also. on both the sides and as it is showing this inductive effect the electron density on the Cp ring is actually increasing. And as it increasing the electron density there is a interaction between the iron and the Cp ring and it is pulling off more electron density from the iron to balance this negative charge on the Cp ring. And as a result iron is losing a little bit more electron density when the Cp star rings are present compared to the original Cp rings and that is reflected on the Mosbach spectroscopy. The slight change it is showing that yes my rings are actually moving out more electron density towards it and that is actually pulling some electron density from the iron and slightly lowering the actual d electron density on the iron which is reflecting on the Mosbach spectroscopy where I am getting it moves towards a little bit on the negative side. So, higher in the oxygen state is coming because of the Cp star rings having this plus i effect. So, that is actually increasing negative charge on the rings and that actually moves electron density from iron which is changing its oxidation state towards the more higher side. And that is why we see this particular trend of change in the isotopic isotope, uh, isomer shift in this particular Mosbach spectroscopy. Then why we are seeing this change in quadrupolar splitting? So now quadrupolar splitting we see a change over here for two reasons. First reason when we see this particular change that is because I am bringing more asymmetry because this is a Cp star ring versus Cp ring. So obviously the lattice electric field gradient is getting more affected and that is showing up over here a shift towards the much higher side. And over here it is changing further 2.44 to 2.47. Because when this 2 Cp star rings are here, it is pushing electron density from here and both of them are trying to pull electron density out of this iron which is further changing the electron density around the iron in this particular orientation which is already a little bit 
asymmetric and now you are pulling more electron density out because there is no electron density in the plane of the iron perpendicular to the way I have drawn and now it is pulling more electron density out because of the 2 cp star ring it is getting more and more asymmetric which is shown over here. And that is what is actually happening and that is reflecting on this particular MOSBUS spectroscopy results for this ferrocene derivatives. Now move next what happens if I take ferrocene oops sorry if I take ferrocene and oxidize it. So, from iron plus 2 I am going to iron plus 3 So, this is ferrocene and this is ferrocenium. Again we look for the isomer shift and the quadrupolar splitting. and we try to find out what will be the difference between these two. If you see in the values we already know 0.53 and 2.39. Now take a look what happens to the ferrocenium. So we are expecting it is already going to iron plus 3. So we should go down in the delta isomer value because it should move to the negative side because iron is now going to higher oxidation state, less d electron less shielding, S electrons are not shielded by D electrons that means it has more chance to go towards the nucleus, increase the S electron density onto the nucleus which has a direct effect on the delta value. If you remember delta value depends on the psi 0 square sample minus psi 0 square the source. and that is going to be more value so it will be higher value and that is multiplied with delta r by r which is actually a negative value because the atomic radii of excited state of 3 by 2 of iron is actually less than ground state. So, it actually shrinks down and that is why it is bringing a negative value which is actually multiplied with this higher value it should move to as a negative side. Let us find out what is actually happening in the experiment. In experiment we interestingly found the value is remaining almost similar, not much change, it is remaining almost similar. And very interestingly the EQ value actually goes down a lot. So, it is almost negligible. So, when we are doing this experiment what we find So, say this is what you are finding for the ferrocene and then we do the same molecule but after the oxidation we are finding this where it is almost shrinking down to a singlet rather than a doublet because this value is actually so low that it is almost negligible. And not only that if I take the average of this the delta value is remaining almost same. Now, over here delta EQ is almost negligible whereas in previously there was a significantly high value of delta EQ. Now, the question is how do I analyze this particular data and try to make a meaning out of it. So, this is actually very interesting data which shows that MOSBUS spectroscopy can give you a very interesting insight 
how the electron distributions are actually happening in different molecules following the redox change. So, over here iron plus 2 got changed to iron plus 3 and we expected the delta value would be changing towards more negative and that is actually not happening at all. Why? Because once the iron plus 3 is formed from iron plus 2, the anions over here, the CP anion, it is not remaining spectator because these are as we just say redox non innocent ligand. So, they also change their property as it is undergoing a redox change in the metal center. So, when you go to a iron plus 3 center, the molecule try to stabilize itself because now previously it was very well stabilized iron plus 2, now it is becoming iron plus 3, there is a change. So, there is a change in the states of the energy that we have shown earlier. So, that previously it was a E2G A1G star dash and E1G. So, one electron will be same and the rest the other electron will be absent in the case of iron plus 3 and present in the case of iron plus 2. So, once this electron is gone the ligand also changes how it is interacting towards the iron. It changes the electron density it is sharing with the iron. Once it becomes iron 3 plus it is supposed to have less electron density, but when it is become much more charged system there is a lot of electron density coming from the CP ring towards the iron because now it is a more charge it can help the CP ring to disperse its charge and that is the extra charge is coming from the CP ring to the iron plus 3 to ensure that the overall electron density remains same. on iron even after it is getting oxidized because when you say we are getting oxidized we are thinking it is the only metal center getting oxidized but it is a molecule. So, the electron get redistributed over the oxidation and after the oxidation when we try to take one electron out of the iron CP rings are replenishing that electron density and that is actually showing up over here and iron is getting electron density back from them and it is showing from the MOSBUS spectroscopy yes. iron even after the oxidation having similar electron density of d electron and that is why it is showing same isomership value. So, it is one of the most interesting example where you are seeing that even after oxidation the ferrocene iron center, ferrocene iron centers are keeping the similar electron density. Now, why this delta EQ value is actually shrinking so much? that is actually coming from a different reason. So, when we talk about this iron 3 plus system we say it is a spin half system because you can see it is a spin half system. But over here there is a very strong interaction between the CP and iron which is bringing a lot of orbital motion into the picture. And this orbital moment multiply with the spin moment and it creates a strong spin orbit coupling. And through the spin orbit coupling it can create further states beyond just only the spin state because now the orbital motion is also coming into the picture. The spin orbit coupling will give generation to multiple state. And it is actually found that this iron after this oxidation can be present in two such states which are known as Kramer's doublet and you can learn about that more when you are talking about the systems from EPR which can have a spin state beyond half. So, this Kramer doublet means you can present in two different states and either of these states can have different amount of quadrupolar splitting because it is generating different amounts of electric field gradient 
and very interestingly this electric field gradient what we are seeing over here in these two different states are actually coming against each other. It is actually negating each other and that effect is shown over here different EFG and they are actually opposing to each other and that actually gives almost negligible EFG which is coming into the picture almost negligible quadrupolar splitting. And that is why even iron plus C state in ferrocenium it is going to give us almost negligible delta EQ value and that is coming over here and we can get well distinguished signal when it is a ferrocene versus when it is a ferrocenium ion and that is what we are seeing over here ferrocene versus ferrocenium. So, let recap what we have discussed over here. So, ferrocene system it is going to show us a very well separated doublet. The doublet is coming because it has a very differ electric field gradient coming from the lattice point of view and also from the valence point of view. Now when we oxidize it the iron plus 2 go to iron plus 3, but it does not remain as iron plus 3 formal state because now the anions the cyclopentadienyl anions giving more electron density back to the iron. And officially although we are writing it is iron plus 3, but practically it is still in iron plus 2 state because 0.5 charge you can say it is coming from this cyclopentyl dienyl anions and which is showcased by this delta or isomer shift values for the ferrocene and ferrocenium ions. On the other hand the delta EQ value shrinks down from a significant 2.4 millimeter per second to almost close to 0. Why it is happening? That is because this iron plus 3 state actually now a spin active state a EPR active system and this actually having an unsaturated spin it is also interacting have a lot of orbital moment because now the CP ring and iron increase their interaction. So, it is having a lot of orbital moment you have a spin moment they will combine it will create spin orbital momentum that means spin orbit coupling. Once it creates the spin orbit coupling it generates multiple state and those multiple states known as Kramer doublet showcase that within very similar energy you can have multiple state and which the system can go forward with respect to the energy it is getting from the temperature. And it can populate either of the state and each of the state has electric field gradient, but they are actually kind of opposing to each other. So, they cancel each other out and an average I am going to see a 0 electric field gradient and almost 0 quadrupolar speeding and that is what is actually happening in the case of ferrocene. So, that is why ferrocene is a well separated doublet ferrocenium on the other hand it is actually almost a single structure. Although the very important thing is that over here we are seeing the delta value almost same for ferrocene and ferrocenium. The only giveaway of that which is the ferrocene which is the ferrocenium is the quadrupolar splitting. Ferrocene has quadrupolar splitting, ferrocenium do not. So, with that we would like to conclude this particular segment over here and we will continue our journey MOSBA spectroscopy and understanding ferrocene and ferrocenium kind of systems in the next segment. Thank you very much.